happy to be showing you a couple slides of mobiling, which is we're, mail, we're leveraging HTML5 to create web and mobile cross-platform social games. So we're basically coding once and we're getting on multiple platforms. It's all about kind of reach and I'm going to talk to you guys about where the new smartphones are going and I only have about nine slides so it's not going to be super technical. I think we've got a really strong bench of technical guys that are going to follow me here so I'm not going to take it from you. So uh, should I go right into yeah. it? So guys, just a little bit of background and then I'll, I'll have a little time for questions so I'm going to zoom through here pretty quickly. Mobling is based in Redwood City, um, like I said, cross-platform web and mobile games. Um, we've got funding, uh, about $11 million from MDV and Deport Capital, and we co-publish games as opposed to, we've got game guys, but uh, we're taking, you know, we're partnering with people that have good community brands and titles, and we're getting on, on front of more people on more platforms. Um, we've got uh, stuff that's on iPhone, Android, Nokia, Palm, Facebook, and MySpace, pretty covered, about 6 million mobile installs, and you know some top-ranked games. Oh, by the way, all the games are free to play, virtual goods, all connected to Facebook or some kind of back end. So these are not the 99 cent Java games. It's, you know, we partner with somebody like a Playdom, it's to get them on some handsets other than iPhone. So, you know, the mobile ecosystem's a little bit bigger than that. Raise your hand if you've seen this slide. Mary Meeker, look, lots of phones, lots of handsets, lots of numbers, bigger and bigger and bigger. But what I want to show you here, if you guys can see the resolution in the middle, what's happening is this new category of phones called um, smart feature phones. So if you think about it, has anybody seen a Palm Pixie? It's a really cheap phone, but it's an incredible phone, right? So the dumb phones are becoming smarter, and HTML5 and WebKit browsers <coughs> are going to leverage those, so you're going to have those in more and more hands of more and more people. Um, that's going to account for about half of all the almost 7 million handsets that are going to be sold in the next five years. So it's kind of a big category. Almost everybody here is in a kind of a state that they've got a, you know, an iPhone or an Android or a kind of a, I, I still use my room. So. Um, fragmentation, so if you guys are going to develop in different operating systems, you've got to kind of get different skill sets. And usually what people are doing now is they're just kind of picking one. And if you're doing mobile games or social games, you're usually only doing something for iPhone. So um, what Mobling's done is I'm going to show you here in a minute. My CTO couldn't make it tonight because he's a smart man. It's his wife's birthday tonight. So I'm up here by myself. Um, so what we do is, is this washed out or can you guys see that OK? Yeah? OK, good. Um, we're basically creating apps using HTML, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we're kind of wrapping it in a, a shell that's native to the mobile operating system so that once the, the actual application's built, I don't have to rebuild it. I just put a new shell on it. So think about it, the jelly and kind of the donut. And uh, you know, again, the single code base of the application can work equally well on Facebook as it can work on an Android phone. Um, we don't think Flash is going to be on all these phones. So, um, you know, when you start talking about HTML5, this is kind of the biggest proponent out there. Obviously, some of his agenda is a little self-serving. Um, you know, it's the, the HTML5 working on the Apple side on Safari is pretty delightful, but it doesn't work everywhere yet. It's not fully mature, and it's going to take some time to be fully adopted by all WebKit browsers, all browsers, and, uh, and all websites. I mean, I've got my iPad here, and there's a lot of sites I just can't get to stuff. So if I use Clicker, I can't, right? I mean, so it's, I feel kind of cheated when I'm laying in bed and this thing's so great and I can't get to a website. So there seems to be, you know, I think one of the questions here was decisions, decisions, decisions. I, I think it's going to be more about kind of um, adopting standards. So what we do is we basically create this I was talking about a donut, which is um, a, a shell that's in the, in the native language of the OS so that we can tap into all the functionality of the mobile phone. Accelerometer, address book, uh, vibration, camera sounds. So then what we do is we basically create a, it could be a game or an application using HTML, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. And we create this shell because HTML5, we just can't do it natively right now. So once I build that, and in this instance it's a game, I basically just put different 
dough around that kind of jelly donut. And using that same code, I'm on right now, currently on iPhone, Android, Nokia, and Palm. And we just basically create new shells for RIM. Sarah was asking if it is, I think it's coming out this summer, but RIM soon coming out with a new uh, OS 6.0 with WebKit functionality. And you know, the first touch phones were not so good, right? So maybe August, we'll see. So, you know, the same technique works perfectly well on tablets, which there's going to be more and more of those. It obviously works on computers. And um, you guys, what this is, and it's hard to read, we can, once I build um, an application using this kind of donut technique, to get on a new handset, it's about three days of QA for us. So we've actually built a lot of stuff that we're on, for instance, Palm doesn't have huge market share. A lot of developers, when you do an 80-20 rule, just don't have time to develop for that. Well, we've done actually really well there because it's not as crowded. You know, I don't need to wear a cup and a mouthpiece like I do in the iPhone category because it's so crowded. It's like there's not that much stuff there, and if you get there early, you do relatively well. So, uh, and then obviously I've got a single code base to maintain. A lot more cost effective than having you know independent teams for each one of these code bases. And every time I have an improvement or a change. <coughs> Then I'm done. So I think I'm done. Yeah. Oh, score update. So while we're doing that, does anybody have any questions? Or does that make sense? Does anybody know the score? Meanwhile? <laughs> <laughs> it's 2725. 2725. There you have it. So. Celtics. Celtics. Yes. Is your do you publish an SDK for third-party developers, or do you? Do no, we're, we're you know um, Sarah here and I used to work at Laszlo, and we're kind of. Um, we're not a tools company, so we're actually, we co-publish with, with partners. So uh, there's some great tool companies out there, but we don't, you know, we're not out there trying to get developers to build stuff with our platform. Yes? How much, uh, does the 80-20 rule apply in terms of features of the native port versus uh, HTML version? You know, I think if, if you look at, uh, I was just playing with Angry Bird. Has anybody played that on the iPhone or the iPad? It's got some amazing physics in it. it that's not quite there. You, you don't have any of the um, fast twitch functionality. But you know what? In, in Facebook or social games, it's not about fidelity and, and, and graphics. I mean, it's just at three, you know, uh, E3, and it, console games are all about that. So it's getting there. Soon there'll be support, I think, for WebGL, OpenGL, and some other things. But but there is a bit of a compromise. But you'll get broader reach. So. Who, who would you think would be the great toolkits out there? Or who would you classify as good or decent? Uh, you mean to build cross-platform games? Uh, yes, or cross-platform apps. Uh, Rogue Mobile for Ruby. Uh, what was the one we were just talking about? Phone Gap, Accelerator. Um, those, everybody that's taking the tack that's um, using HTML and CSS is good. iPhone cracked down on the people making kind of sausage code, which is, if you think about somebody like Java Ground or Mytopia, that are using you know, all sorts of funky things, those are not going to be allowed on the iPhone. So, I think I might feel like mine. Yeah, we're just Oh, we're good. All right. Good. Oh, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, good.